Hey, what is up, everyone? It is Rich. Hey, look, he drew a horse from a front view. Um, I was listening back to the Amano video this morning while I was on my walk. Uh, yeah, I wanted to do a video. I honestly thought I was going to take a break today, but uh, pondering the Amano video, which I actually found very inspirational and very fun to look at. We've kind of got a train of thought going, and when you've got some momentum and a train of thought, my thought is always just keep going with it just as these people are going everyone's moving forward we shall so let me do some quick housekeeping and then we'll get to it so yeah reflecting on the amano video yesterday that was really fun and that was actually really an interesting video it's quite long but honestly for for anyone that hasn't checked it out i would highly recommend it i think it's a very very good video and um Almost regardless of if you're a fan of his art or not, I think there's a lot of really, really good takeaways from that video. And uh, he is an incredible artist, so um, it may win you over. It's it's interesting because I know when I do any video that there will be people that will be very excited about it. And then people that probably aren't as interested in a particular, you know, um, genre or, or artist or whatever. But uh I always try to make every video somewhat um, applicable to everyone, if I can do it. This is a great piece. These running forward pieces, I think, are always very fun. And he's got a lot of characters. And in fact, my patrons will remember uh, just this past week, I think, uh, we did a video and George Perez did this breakdown of, of how to think about pieces like this. And I was explaining with some of his examples. But these characters overall are actually in perspective but sometimes you'll see big group shots of the, like things like this and they're not the perspective he, he keeps it pretty consistent but uh anyway i won't get into all that right now but uh let me think let me think so yesterday i i actually finished finished like the final version of the blaster kid script i'm going to give it to a few people to read it to um give me feedback on it and then i might tweak it but but past that i actually did finish a completed version where i broke down all the panels for myself and uh it feels really good. It was a lot of work. Honestly, it was a tremendous amount of work. I was just dying to get um, back to drawing. So today I actually can draw, which actually is a nice treat from all the um, the other work. But once I get the feedback from them, then I'll, I'll, I'll do some nips and tucks and just make sure that uh, everything makes sense and it's an enjoyable read and, and you know, the, you know, I, a lot of times when I'll talk about the book, I talk about the art or, or things that focus like that. But the story is really important. You know what I mean? You have to have a kick-ass story because that's what's going to suck people in. And, and I will say this, too, that it really, really feels like an adventure. I'm telling you, when I was, I was about 30 pages into doing, um, I guess you would almost call it like a read-through of the script. I mean, it was just incredible. I really felt like I had traveled and done all this stuff and I was like man that's crazy the beginning of the book felt so long ago and so like man we'd really come a long way it was interesting so anyway all right let's get to this book there's gonna be a lot of different artists I wanted to do a spotlight on Bengus um, and uh, there is actually a lot of Bengus in this book so um, instead of having to sit on Yandex or Google image search for a long time and trying to cherry pick out his images uh, these types of books actually um, will hit fit the bill. Now, I may not know every artist that um, we're looking at, so I apologize in advance for that. But um, this is a great little drawing. I love everything about this piece. In fact, I think all these little characters are amazing. And um, yeah, we've knocked it out of the park the last few days. I, I really think we've done a lot of fun videos. This is cute, too. I'm actually a big fan of like 8... Uh, this isn't really like 8-bit or 16-bit art, but... Um, I like that kind of stuff, and and uh, I uh, I will go through little periods where I'll go on something like Tumblr, and I love little animated gifs of like old school, like kind of eight bit art. And again, I know this is an eight bit, but it's leaning, it's starting to head that direction a little bit. But this is great. I always had fantasies of of having one sort of chunk of my work doing something like this and doing some really fun. Um, like pieces like this i will do it at some point i'm a big fan of um shit what is his name i can't think of it he did the video game firewatch what the fuck is his name ollie moss i'm a big fan of ollie moss i'm sure a bunch of you guys are too ollie's great he's very creative what i like about ollie is he, in, a, in a weird way he has similarities to banksy although banksy is very different than Ollie Moss, but they're very, very intelligent and clever artists. 
And when you have a mind that works like those type of people, you're going to do interesting work. Whereas someone might have better drawing chops than you, but the stuff won't kind of make it, it doesn't stay, it won't like resonate and won't like it, it won't have an impact on people. His little feet are great, and she's she's really cool too. Oh man, all about super puzzle fighter. Yeah, these are funny. That's so cool. Man, what a wild array of character designs. They're so freaking cool. They're really, really cool. You know, and I'm actually... I'll say this. Just looking at this stuff is making me think of, of it. Right now on Instagram, I've been seeing more and more kick-ass art. And I don't know what's in the water right now if it, because everybody's been locked down for the last few months or what it is. But, but I've noticed a significant increase in the le like the quality of the stuff that people are put putting out it was really interesting but just the last week i was like man i'm seeing a lot of freaking good art you know and i'm always following people new people not even top artists if i see that you follow me i will follow you back the same goes on twitter i don't segregate people and i don't cancel people so if you are into my work or if you follow me and I realize that you do, I will follow you back and I respect everyone's opinions and that's just the way that it's gonna be from now on for me. It always has been that way. What I'm saying is that, I mean, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not gonna like isolate people unless someone's going way, way overboard and saying stuff that I actually think is like just far beyond um, a, you know, a, a rational discussion. I have a few friends that, that teeter on that, but I know that they're good people, so it's like, it's tough. You see them going bananas online, and you're like, oh, come on, reel it in a little, please. You're killing me. It's like, let's just go have a beer and watch a band, and let's calm down. <laughs> These are great. Damn, look at this. Uh, what is the, there's a, it doesn't, it doesn't look, well, you know, it kind of does. What is, there's an animated, there's an animated movie on Netflix right now that's like this, it's like a gangster thing, and there's these two little characters that have, one of them has a head like this, he's like, like a little skull. It's actually really cool. I, I liked it. I thought it was interesting. It's, it's, um, it's a few years old. But yeah, it kind of has that vibe. Someone will know what I'm talking about. I thought it was cool. I thought the animation was really great. And, and uh, I, although I don't live in like a gang area, um, when I went to school, I knew a lot of kids that were in gangs that lived not too far from me. And um, it was interesting seeing like the hood and stuff like that from this animation point of view. The safer way to view <laughs> visit it. It's like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Uh, it was kind of like that. It's like, hey, I can run around the dangerous areas and not actually get my ass kicked. That's good. <laughs> was it San Andreas? Grand Theft Auto 3. What was that one called? I guess that's... Is that San Andreas? No, I'm spacing. I can't remember what the... Was Vice City was the second one, or the well, second one that I was aware of. Maybe it was just called Grand Theft Auto 3, and then went Vice City, and then San Andreas. I'm a bad gamer. This is really cool. So many of my friends were into this when I got to Wildstorm. I had never really seen this stuff except, like, on the game. You know, like, game boxes and um, at the arcade or whatever. But uh, you, when I started meeting artists at Wildstorm that actually had um, some experience beyond my local comic book shop shops i said shop i used to shop at like every shop that was within probably 30 minutes of my house and there used to be quite a few um but yeah i never really had an opportunity to buy in these books but then once you had a friend or something you would see it in person you'd be like man i need this in my life 
It felt like there was a wealth of ideas in any of these collected editions that, that if you were called upon to do a pinup or a source book piece or, or um, a cover for a comic or a pinup or a double page spread, like these pieces were going to help you um, achieve that that goal with a lot of creative stuff that wasn't being directly like pulled from man that is a great drawing um from like american comics so it felt like you had like a secret stash of ideas dude this is so money right here god dang and i really like the colors on this this is really really neat it's so loose but man it looks good this is amazing too and this too in fact her head gets a little, uh, got like a little away from me. It's like, there's a lot of cranium going on here, but uh, it's still really nice. Um, and, and oh man, this is great too. Wow. This whole piece is just, like, sorry, remove all my scribblings. That is really good. Man, I love the coloring right here. That is sweet. I didn't see her. What are you doing, young lady? Oh man, this is so good. Oh, it's going to feel so good to get back to drawing. Holy shit. I'm telling you, create your own book. Especially if you're if you're doing it all yourself. It's a lot of work. It really, really is. But things are getting done. And that's what's important. So keep it on a schedule. And it'll get easier, too. That's the the nice thing is, uh, you know what I mean? The more experience you have with it, the, the, the more streamlined you'll be able to make things. It's just the way it goes. It's just really cool. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I didn't really notice his face peeking in right here. That's really, really funny. I like it. It's a weird tangent with his his um, cheek right there, but I actually think it looks really cool. Look at this dude. He's like sneaking in. Oh, man. This guy's awesome, too. Wow. This is so good. Oh, my God. Oh, let's go into full screen mode. I apologize. Man, he's got a big gap. <laughs> I had to be careful. I was almost drawing something kind of... No, don't do it. <laughs> okay. Wow. I actually fought this guy. It's funny. I got a PlayStation Now account, and it's actually very, very cool. I, I haven't played video games, just to be clear, in over, like, six weeks, maybe almost two months now. But uh, um, I, I did subscribe to it a, a while ago, somewhere a month or two into the whole COVID thing, and I was getting a little cagey and needed something to unwind. But, dude, I fought this guy in, in whatever the one. It's probably one of the more recent games. He kicked my ass so hard. <laughs> It was funny because I was doing pretty good. I hadn't played one of those games in a long time. And I was like, I still got it. I got some moves. And then I fought this dude. And, man, he just wiped the floor up with me. These drawings are so freaking good. God dang. It's absolutely incredible. This is really interesting anatomy. His arm is, like, super truncated but looks so good. What I mean is, um, like, this right here, it's just, it's... There's a it's a very tight space that he squeezed all this in. I like how it looks though. But yeah, like this muscle is like sitting right on these. I would give it a little more gap, but I think doing that also wouldn't make it look as foreshortened. So it's like he made the right call. I'm just saying that like it's interesting when you see stuff like that because you go, hmm, I wouldn't have drawn it that way, but if I would have drawn it my way, it probably would have looked stiff uh, more boring, you know, or or just wouldn't have looked right and you couldn't figure out what, what you had done wrong. So that's why it's it's I've mentioned in many many videos now at this point that that even if you're drawing and your drawings aren't turning out good it still gives you a point of view that when you look at someone who's done something well you'll be able to compare it against a failure that you had meaning that you'll look at an arm and go oh man I wasn't even doing that no wonder my arm was looking weird I couldn't figure it out but if you just look at art and don't draw then you really don't have anything that you've completely focused in on you may talk the talk, but it doesn't really mean too much when uh, it is go time. These are Bengus, right? These right here? I'm nearly sure. Maybe they all are. 
Man, nah, these are so good. I've seen these in color in one of my other books. Really, really cool little drawings, though. Man, I don't, I've never seen them, I don't think, in pencil. Wow. Street Fighter Me. Oh, and this is probably a Q&A with him. They, they look like there was a chapter dedicated to him, so... Yeah, Alan M. loved this stuff. I mean, I would assume quite a few people did, but Alan drew just like this. It's funny seeing this. It looks a lot like his early work. This and this. He drew people just like this. His stuff is worth seeking out. He worked on Union for a little bit, but not like not like Texaria did the original main series, but I'm trying to remember what Alan did. Those little, those should be books I would seek out. I think there would be a charm to his work. At the time, I thought he was good, but it was not really exactly the style that I was into. I was I was kind of more into Aaron Weisenfeld, and like Brandon Peterson had just done like Rip Claw or was working on like medieval Spawn Witchblade. So although I like this stuff, it was I was definitely leaning a little more towards that. Um, it's like a different structure for the characters. This is nice. Man. Look at the silhouette on this, how bouncy it is. You know, there's a lot of lot of shape going on there. It looks really cool. Damn, now I want to see some Alan M comics. Like I have to I'll try to look around. It sucks because my my old image collection is so spread out. It's it's just man, I, there's no easy way for me to go and actually find them anymore. I ha I need to go through my whole collection and just sort of work it out. Oh, these are cool. I've never seen this stuff before. Street Fighter Zero. Yeah, these are nice little drawings. I like the hands. Damn, that's a good pose right there. This is cool too. This is all good. All good. Man, that's a nice little drawing. So, so talented. Damn, that's nice too. It's really interesting. I always find these are these are difficult positions of the leg. So it's always fun to see someone do it where you go, that works for me. It, I would have drawn more, and it probably would have made it look weird. This is a great drawing right here, this guy. I like his kneecaps. This is good, too. He's handsome. Look at her. She's awesome as well. They're all good. Wow. This guy's really cool. And then Dustin Wynn, when he came in. Bangus. It was Bangus was his favorite artist. I had said Akiman. I was, Akiman, I was wrong. It was actually Bangus. You can see it. This looks a little like Dustin, like a Dustin sketch. He's he's developed his stuff into totally his own thing. I mean, it's uh, Dustin has always I think looked like Dustin, but you can see little little nods to this stuff occasionally. Sort of filter through. Wow. Yep. I wreck it. <laughs> He's so cool. It was funny, I mentioned, because I had watched that high score um, documentary on Netflix. I need to watch it again, though. I didn't, I never finished it properly. I started to drift sort of in the last, like, episode or two. Man, this guy is really cool looking. I like that a lot. He looks like he would ride a motorcycle with like a gang of like other dudes. <laughs> he's really funny. Um, man, he's cool too. Wow, look at this dude. I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I don't even remember. 
Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the fighting game that I first played or that I had at home was called Eternal Champions. I think it was the Sega Genesis game. Maybe PlayStation, but it was fun. But it was, I'm sure it was like a total ripoff of these games. <laughs> oh, man, he's awesome. I like his tooth. Man, his characters are so good. This guy looks awesome. This dude looks a little like Bruce Lee. He's awesome. I'm feeling this guy. I mean, these are a little more nondescript. This is cool, too. And then his hair is funny. But, yeah, they're all just really, really cool designs. Like, I'm feeling it. Wow. It's funny because this reminds me of something I would see in, like, a Pat Lee comic or, like, like uh, one of his guys would, would have art like that. Dreamwave. Udon, too. Oh, man, that's really cool. <laughs> He's funny. I've been kind of feeling like I want to watch a Bruce Lee movie lately. It's funny. I just have it on my mind. I need to bust something out. <laughs> it's super hot at my house right now, so I apologize that I'm yawning, but the heat, it relaxes me. These are cool. It's interesting. Oh, man. Yeah, these are really interesting. They're, they're cool. I wish I could read the books. Man, he is so cool looking. Oops, sorry. This guy is really, really neat. Great shapes. Oh, man, that is great, too. Wow. I like it. All right, close. No. Uh, 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 uh. I probably won't go through all of these pages because I opened, I think, several hundred. It would take very long. I need to watch the clock. In fact, let me see what we're at right now. Ten. I'll go for, like, another, like, 12 minutes. But, yeah, I can't do our videos right now. I really, really need to just be working. So, it's okay. I'm going to... I have other stuff that I need to do today for YouTube. I need to shoot a, a Patreon video. But then later in the day, I'm going to actually mess around with my um, webcam and try to start getting that set up so I can stream. So, it'll all benefit you. Um, and you'll... I'll be online all the time. So, lots of opportunities for us to hang and when I get the live stream up, it'll be fun because we can communicate directly in real time. I'll try to vary the times that I live stream to some extent so that people that live in different parts of the world will be able to watch it live. Because if you, you know what I mean, there's certain times of the day that work well for me but might not work for you. So I'll try to be somewhat conscious of that. Man, he is so cool looking. These are great drawings, actually, all of them. Man. Damn. That's some nice stuff. Oh, his face. Dude, that is so great. Wow. Who drew these pieces? Does anyone know? Is this Bengus? I can't tell. I don't know his work that well. Maybe the whole book is Bengus. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> wow. Damn. God, these character designs are so creative. It's it's so important to see stuff like this. And even if you're not going to draw anything even remotely like this, to understand that there's just it's like you really really have to challenge yourself when you create things what was i it was something i was watching or listening to last night oh it was a book i was reading a book 
and the art wasn't so good in it, so I'll keep it kind of vague. But the guy was giving good advice. Like, verbally, he could give you good advice, but I, I, his art was good. It was just kind of boring. It was like fantasy art that's, like, not the most exciting thing. But, but he was basically saying how important it is to use reference when you design things because it's like your imagination is good, and you can definitely use that. But it's like if you don't take the time and do your homework and try to cross-reference things, especially if you're designing or, you know, drawing you know like if you're going to create like some sort of fantasy train you know as a for instance it's like you have to you have to combine your creative with sort of like grounding it with things and that's the that's why these costumes are so good is there's like legit stuff going on and then they just the things that they amplify are so cool looking <laughs> his boots But yeah, little tidbits like that. It's always nice to hear that kind of stuff and just remind you, you know. It's funny, they all look so much younger here. <laughs> He's funny. Hey, the look on his face. That is a great drawing. That is two. Wow. I'm blown away by this. This stuff is so freaking awesome. It's funny if you gave him like a different hairstyle, he'd have a pot leaf on his. <laughs> it's just be like Weed Man or something. This is cool. Nice shot. Oh man, you know, I was looking at. Um, God, what comic was it? I was looking at the J. Lee Young Blood Strike File issues. I think that's what it was. Yeah, and I think that book it continues on past the four issues that he did, <coughs> and then just turns into full comics. I think the first four issues are flip books. So it's Rob Liefeld doing Die Hard. Is that the character's name? Um, and then Jay did. Chapel is the flip book and um, after that is Jeff Matsuda and I had forgot about Jeff Matsuda stuff but Jeff Matsuda is really really good and if I'm not mistaken I think he did actually go into another line of work um, sometime in the early 2000s where he's like an animator or works on video games or something like that but Matsuda was legit he could draw really good it was interesting when you you saw the book transition from Liefeld to Jay Lee both who were doing you know real nice work um, and you saw Matt Suda stuff, you were like, okay, man, this guy can really draw his ass off, too. It was an incredible time for comics. There was a lot of talent coming in and a lot of, like, very, very young energy of people that just were super, super driven to, like, sort of flex their drawing muscles. This guy is awesome. He looks like um, Stallone in The Expendables or something. <laughs> it's funny. His uniform is so efficient. He's just got like two grenades. Well, it was four in the other drawing, I think. That, uh, if I remember, he had another two, like right here. But it's like he's got two grenades and then whatever the stick is. I'm not sure. If, is it a sword, if you see him from another angle? Or he's just going to beat you over the head with it. But man, it's no nonsense. He looks tough, though, man. This is awesome. Damn. Wow. Yes, indeed. This is good, good, good. These are Bengus, right? I remember these from my uh, other Capcom book. Uh, this in particular, I remember. His boots are great. That's so funny. <laughs> it's like a switchblade. That's a very jagged blade he's got on the thing. Damn. This dude is awesome, too. I, I'm so happy that I did this book. This is really, really exciting and it's inspirational. Wow. He reminds me like a, a male version of like, you know, they always have the one like teenage girl that's like super smart. It's like the computer person of the like superhero team. <laughs> he looks like a guy version of that. 
It's like they throw them on the computer and they're like part of the team. They usually wear that color too. It's like green and they have blonde hair with glasses or whatever. They kind of mix it up now more, but. All right. These are interesting. Yeah. Man, that's a cool little pose right there. He looks like he's ready to just kick his this guy's leg out. Like <laughs> if you press one button, he would like totally do like the kick really fast and like this dude would pop him in the head. Boop. <laughs> oh man, these are cool. It's just pages and pages of this stuff. This book is like three or four hundred pages long. So much awesome. Man, that's crazy. Man, he really popped that muscle. It's funny. Oh, I see, because of the fur on his arm. It sort of hides it, because it almost makes his arm look like it's super narrow. I see it. I like his pants. Or whatever he's wearing. That's cool. <sighs> yeah. I have a lot of friends influenced by this stuff. We'll move through some of these a little quicker. I'll go back into full screen mode too for you. For you all. A great pose man his anatomy is so cool right there it's so just tucked in this is a great little gesture he's just chilling it looks like he's having a cocktail it looks like a low ball glass damn art is so fun The great thing about art is you can look at art and listen to music. It's like my two favorite things. <laughs> they actually, they, they're they quite compatible. You could throw on headphones and look at this stuff and be a happy, happy camper all day. Every day. He's like, hello, little birdie. Man, those are some big chains. I like this, the weld on it. It's a really nice touch. But see, and that's a good example. I was talking about the train thing. It's like like a normal person, if you just drew chains, you probably wouldn't throw that in unless you knew that that was there, if you had worked with chains or really dealt with them intimately. But I wouldn't think of that right now. Now I would, but little nuances like that. That's why you use reference, friends. Things like this too, you know, just being able to see what a, a samurai helmet looks like or whatever. You know, it'll help you. It'll help you create the fantasy. Oh man, it's cool. It's funny because this there's that guy that draws all the smiling people. He's done stuff like this where it's like a bazillion people like on a bicycle. I wonder if he was a fan of this. It wouldn't surprise me. I would guess that this was done before he did his piece. He's more of a fine artist, really successful. I can't think of his name. Liney. Oh, that's cool. Oh man, look at that. Dramatic. And I like how they're all like the sort of superimposed sort of vibe over it. it looks really cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's a nice piece. This is that's interesting. I'm assuming this was done in maybe like Corel Painter. It doesn't look like a traditional painting to me. It may be, but it looks more like a digital file. This is sort of. Oh, well, that looks like watercolor. Who knows?
I love the ink line that this guy got here. Man, it's great. It's a great drawing. Make sure you, like on my um, Amano video, I commented and posted a link to a YouTube channel. Go check it out because they do these little biographies on different artists and they show them working. Like they'll go to their studios and they show original art and stuff like that. But it's very, very interesting to see professional artists even just doodling for a minute or so. You can really learn a lot from it, it you know, if they're sketching and whatnot. I mean, you could do it with any artist, but, uh, um, you know, I, I really felt like I learned a lot just seeing a few minutes of different people drawing in those videos inking and stuff like that it was you know you can always pick up a little something you see the way that person does their gesture drawings is different than you and it'll just plant little seeds you know where you go mm -hmm, you know what maybe i should if i tried that maybe it might it might do something something neat might happen might as well take advantage of the fact that we live in a world where we can actually see things and that that is really wild <laughs> oh, it's funny because it almost looks like they're on a surfboard like on the ocean oh, man. it's funny because I was I was starting to think about blaster kid it was well, the other uh, Street Fighter video that I did um, was the same thing as, as I was so excited to work on Blaster Kid I was sort of felt like I wasn't paying attention to the video and I could find myself like I would go through images and I was narrating the stuff but I my mind was just completely somewhere else but I was just thinking about like I've, I gave a, a friend of mine that's a writer the Blaster Kid script last night and he's going to read it and go, go over it for me and let me know if it makes sense and all that stuff but uh I'm actually looking forward to it, and I, I actually hope that he finds, well, I mean, it would be great if he found, like, went like, wow, I read it, it's really good, you do this and do this, it'll be, like, perfect, or something like that, but if it wasn't the case, and he read it, and was just like, oh, man, I'm sorry to tell you this, but, like, this doesn't make sense, and I'm not really feeling this or that, um, you know what, there's something exciting about that, too, All, only because of the fact that, that, um, <laughs> better to have one person tell you that than have a thousand... <laughs> <laughs> or 2000 you know what i mean so it's funny it's like i'm i'm excited to see what he said i think i've done the hard work but uh, i mean it's it's still i'm i'm looking forward to getting actual some cr criticism on it and uh it'll be cool then i can i feel confident that i could i that the script won't change in terms of like what that what's on the pages i think that that is all solid and i think just within dialogue and like little things um Really, it's just making sure that you've established stuff properly, that things make sense, and that there's a relationship that the characters have that's either positive or negative, or there's tension or whatever it is, but you know. It's like in your mind you go, oh yeah, these two hate each other, but you need to make sure that the people reading the comic book understand why they don't like each other, you know? And it can't just be like, I've always hated you because of a 19... 91 you did that thing and she's like yes i know and they just all explain it to you <laughs> i was telling him another tricky thing with blaster kid is that there's times where she's traveling alone and so you you uh have to you know either go okay well there's not gonna be a lot of talking on this page it'd be like if you sent hellboy on a mission um you know and he's running around and and uh you know, is the inner dialogue moving it along or whatever. It's interesting stuff. Fun. Fun challenges. Man, these are great little sketches. This is so nice, man. It's really good, too. Well, this should get everybody up and doodling today, I would think. And hopefully creating original characters. You know, that's what I always try to encourage you is, is it's like, it's fun to draw these characters. By all means, do it. But, you know, give yourself a little time each day to try to, like, design some things of your own. You know, take little ideas like this. 
Uh, try it with your own characters. Like I, I had mentioned that there was a point as I was getting closer and closer to like doing Blaster Kid for real that I was like, I need to be able to draw her really good. There's no excuses. It's like that's the main, main character in the book. I better be able to draw the, sh the shit out of her. <laughs> so it's like it. once you have that, then it's like, all right, I, I have a goal. I have a focus. There's a purpose to all this and sketching and you know prelim work that you that we'll do you know in our sketchbooks or you know you try to draw pages or whatever you man it's awesome pose right there at some point it's go time you've made up this guy and you're like all right now i need to be able to draw him awesome and move him around and really give him an attitude and a body language and stuff like that that's different than this character you know and this guy is gonna have different mannerisms and poses and personality behaviors that that other people don't you know it's fun but yeah you know you kind of become an actor you become an actor for every character in a way The one thing I was bummed that there was no San Diego Comic Con was that uh, I couldn't buy new art supplies at the show. That's one of the fun things is going to the different vendors that have interesting art supplies. And you kind of look around and see what's hot. And maybe you have a friend in Artist Alley that's picked up some new pen or something. And they're like, man, you need to get this. This is such a great little drawing right here. She's really cute. And man, it's just nice. I love the gesture, her arm coming out for her. It's really, it's really, really good. But uh, yeah, you know, someone like my friend Joel Gomez, he draws uh, La Muerta for Brian Polito. I was sitting next to him and his wife at the show. And uh, Joel, he's a sketch machine. The guy will draw like literally five days straight. It's absolutely insane. But uh, he's always got some new little tool or sketchbook or some, something that he's picked up. It's always interesting. Man, these are awesome. Look at this. Like, that's so cool. They're really funny. But yeah, yeah. So it's fun. He's funny. Where's my dude? I want to see, do they draw him? No, he's not in here. Wow. God, these guys draw so well. Dude, those are such nice drawings. Wow. Oh my god. That's what I do when I see good, really good art. I'm I don't know who this is. I'm gonna guess it's Bangus. Anything good, I'm gonna say is Bangus. The, you're like, no, no, this is this blah blah blah. Whoever this is, they're really, really good. Really good. <laughs> this is where you want to be with your art. This person could draw anything and make it look cool. Damn. Oh my god. Yeah, that's some high level shit right there. There's just, it's like every character is well drawn, but there's like a consistency in terms of just the confidence that this person has with their work. And the execution is just, it's all really good. These are like, there's a lot of subtle shit going on too. Man, he's like really, really got good control of like he sees it and he can just keep it in there. It's really good. Yeah, these are nice too. Man, this is the um. This might actually be the same artist. I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but. Uh, I was saying that he had a very swirly line and it was a lot of like stuff like this when he would set up his sketches you just saw a lot of like real curly lines and this kind of looks like it might be the same person but I thought that was interesting because I don't set up my drawings that way but ultimately having such a wild silhouette in a weird way um, even if you stiffen up the drawing as you finish it it'll still probably be more lively than if you started with more lines that were like this kind of stuff you know what I mean like that's gonna be stiff and then it's just gonna get stiffer but at least stuff like this you've got a, a fighter's chance fighter's chance that's all you want 
All right, we'll do like five more, and then I'm gonna wrap this up. So we'll find five winners. Let's see, come on. Oh yeah, I've seen this drawing before. And, and this, this is in my other book. Maybe this, this looks somewhat familiar. That's really cool. <laughs> Yes. The wrap thing is funny. This is cool. I like this a lot. And this is great, too. That's awesome. He's got a turtle. And he looks a little like a turtle. Maybe that's him. Both of them are him. This is nice. God, man. There's like every pose ever happened in in any drawing is in this book that's what that's my takeaway from this is like they've done it all maybe there's not that many back views this is cool if you're going to sketch, this is just, this is a, a, a recommendation, is try not to do a lot of stuff like this. The reason being is, and I've said this before, like when you work and really sort of nail down like T-pose type things, like an anatomy book and you're learning anatomy and you don't draw a lot and you learn stuff like this, this is a very difficult idea to move around and I would rather have someone try stuff like this and not land it and things like this and this and and make mistakes than try to start from here and work out from here this is it's it's kind of two different things it really is and and it will make it harder for you to learn how to do stuff like this so if you're a beginner don't be afraid to try stuff like this. You you won't nail it, but this will create a level of um, fearlessness and excitement. And you can learn the anatomy along the way in bits and pieces. But yeah, don't grind on like T poses. I think it's a bad idea. That's just my own opinion on it, though. I've never been told that by any sort of <laughs> professional source. That's just my experience tells tells me based on what happened to my own art is that that was not a, a road that I should have experienced because you think you're doing the right thing you know you're like no this this will get me there because I'll know all the, the stuff you'd be better off just piecemealing it you know what I mean like where you work on an area of the back like this and like memorize it and then just immediately start throwing it into your creative drawings where you're moving it around Check out my Patreon. I mean, I really, I, I circle back to the same ideas again and again and again, only because that you see it in really good art. I mean, it's impossible to avoid because you just see the result, you see the approach, and, and you know, I, it was like in the Amano video, we were talking about, like, it was like, you could see early on, he was really trying to learn anatomy, and it's a part of the process, is, you know, you learn the muscles and you learn where they go and all this stuff. But but ultimately, you start to leave all that stuff out and then you're just drawing kind of what looks good. So it's like you kind of learn it to forget it. But you just definitely don't want to start off with stiff things, stiff ideas, you know. Really exciting drawing has overlapping shapes. It has shapes that sort of bend and twist and, and um, you know, move through each other. Again, I'm on a mouse, but you know what I mean? You want stuff that interacts. And it will just look a lot more fun. I mean, even something as shitty as that, there's a like there's an interest to that 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 you know simple stuff just won't have as much. So it's a lot of shapes. A lot of shapes. But the fundamentals are what will get you there and it's fun demental this is cute oh man I really like that a lot that's a nice little drawing 
<laughs> Her face is awesome. Okay. I think we've covered this book pretty good. Oh, hey, that's cool. We missed this. This part wasn't in the book yesterday or the scan that we had of it. That's awesome. Man, what a cool piece. Imagine a few years from now when you've worked on your art and you've made up this many fun characters in your own universe and you could do a piece like this and say, I created all these characters. That should be your takeaway from this video. Start creating your universe. Start creating your characters. And someday you'll draw a piece like this and you'll remember this moment. All right? <laughs> That's a send off. All right. Have a great day. I love you all. Smash the like. Follow. Make sure you go to the Blaster Kid Indiegogo and please do the pre sign up launch thing. We need Indiegogo to know that people are anticipating this and excited. And uh, like I mentioned before, we've got 11 more days for coloring. So you've got until the 16th, I'll say, to get your color samples in. So make sure that if you want to do it, do it. And um, then I'll be announcing the colorist and all that stuff as we move along. It'll be fun. And the fanzine's coming too. So all right, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.